I just wanted to say um, on behalf of Title, being a uh, principal, elementary principal myself for many years, it's parents who come in and can't afford to pay for lunch and that you that, who eagerly fill out that information. And um, that would be my only thought that if you don't have something that you're going to be offering that parent, what would be the reason for them to fill out that information for you? And because, you know, I'm concerned about the title funding that we use. That's our numbers. We're talking roughly 280. Right. That's the free and reduced. Right. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that the board can do is when when you direct us to build it, you can just direct us to build that in the RFP. That vendor. What I mean by that is, if you want us to bid it out, that's part of the RFP. That those vendors come back with a description as to how they're going to address that within their proposal. They're losing it because if we're not in the lunch program, then you don't get a proposal from them. That's true. That's yeah. the board's choice, though, whether to stick with your current vendor or to bid that out as well. Right. And if you bid that out within the RFP process, you can build that into a, the requirement that they respond to. I, I understand. So what it really is going to come down to is you feel this is going to be an area for the big fall in the majority of people are there have been a couple of other vendors that have yeah. contacted me. No, I understand that. I just don't want somebody from Northern Illinois showing up, like we did with the bus contract. We've been just for the sake that they want to venture all to a different territory. Right. The, I can tell you that the two additional vendors that have contacted us both have contracts in our scene. Okay. So. I think that um, you should be able to bring that $37,000 cost down bidding process too. You just I happen to go in on Friday to watch and observe how much was discarded. And it was either um, French bread, pizza, or hamburgers. Well the lower grades if they took two bites of the hamburger, that was it, threw it away. Maybe you can reduce the size. Offer them a half. If they want more you can always give them another half, but the amount of waste is unbelievable. I'd say you're throwing away almost three quarters of what each kid takes. Yeah, let's see, this is a limitation. The federal government forces you to give a certain amount. Right. So yeah. a toddler or somebody do mini sliders for smaller grades. Yeah, which would then you know, reduce your cost. Sure. Your cost. So this is where you open yourself up to much more possibilities by not being forced into that box. <clears throat> the hope is that we could save $37,000. What do you mean, hope is you could save 37000 In the uh, RFP. But if you would say thirty-seven thousand, they make a proposal that says to a certain limit, it's a free lunch or something. When you're spending a lot of money on lunch program right now. Is it a thirty-seven small percentage of it? Yes. Do any process could get that out of it and uh, bring it to zero cost difference? Possibly. But until you have some bidding, we're going. If you go with forward with the bid and say we're not going to be in the federal lunch program, now let's talk about reducing so we can save money and therefore pay for free reduce based on the current standards. I'm sure they could come back with no problem with that. So until you go to the bidding process, you'll know. Any thoughts? I just Sorry, that we look at a, um, a plan that does take care of the free and reduced um, students and that their lunch looks the same and that's what we cover. And I think our lunch numbers might go up if we start offering a little different variety. Because for what, the last two, three years they've been dropping? Which coincides with the federal mandates. Well, the big slide was the first one. So uh, I agree with everything except for I don't agree that it has to look identical. Took a free lunch through elementary school. My parents were poor, single mom, and it was not the same lunch. You wait in line with a lunch ticket. Everybody knew you were waiting in line for the free lunch ticket. Didn't bother one way or the other. Well, to some students, I'm sure maybe it would. But that's the cost difference to having somebody else pay for your free lunch. I don't think you should get the right to say, not only should somebody else pay for my lunch, I should get to tell them what's not my lunch. Which is what the federal government has now locked us into. Because they're saying that 80% of students in Waterford Grade School District that 
don't take free lunch or reduce lunch are now mandated to do something to make everybody else in the 20% feel as though they're happy a free and reduced lunch as they get to. And that's what the federal government is doing. So I, I would suggest that we uh, <coughs> exit out of the federal program, that we go to bids and try to see if we can reduce our costs uh, by the bidding process, and that we should set some type of a dollar limit maximum that our that our school districts should spend on creating reduced lunches. I hate to see any dollars I, I come out of education going to lunches, but I, I don't see a way around this. We either have to pony up some money or stay in the federal program. I would agree with your thoughts on that. I'll let that hear But then if the question comes down to, as I suggest, we say we're going out of it and go for the, the uh, uh, bid process. Exactly. Until you say you're out of it, you're in. The changes there are off of the bid process. That would be my suggestion to bring to the board. Yeah, we have time to get this together before the next year is not the program starts. How do you feel about that? Anybody else? Any thoughts? I think we have a lot of people here. We need to get out of the presentation. That's okay. Um, all right, so that's two that were going back to the board then for okay and going out of the program. And they went out of the process. 